Thank you, Mr Speaker. In the 1980s and 1990s, New Zealand experienced uh, a wave of change underpinned by the boneheaded idea that if government takes a hands-off attitude uh, towards more or less everything, then free market competition uh, between unregulated companies will somehow magically produce the best outcomes for everyone. The theory was applied not only to goods and services, but to whole industries uh, and to areas of core public services like electricity generation, health and education. And one of the casualties of this enthusiasm for deregulation was leaky homes. Ordinary people became uh, the victims of corner cutting and butt covering by all those who could now get away with it. The same thing happened with finance companies and another casualty has been safety in underground mines. In 1992, Teams. government threw away the prescriptive mine safety rules that had been built up by the experience of many years underground. These rules were eventually replaced by requirements that mining companies take those safety measures that they found to be practicable. Now, the idea of practicability has embedded in it the idea of affordability, uh, because a company that can't afford a particular safety measure will find it not to be practicable, uh, with the result that different mines end up with different safety standards. At the same time, the triangle of safety, where uh, companies, workers and the government all have appointees with particular responsibility for ensuring safety, was demolished by the abolition, first of all, of check inspectors <coughs> and then a dismantling of the government's mines inspectorate. Thus, the national government in the 1990s, first of all, radically weakened the actual rules for underground mine safety and then dismantled the structures to monitor and enforce compliance. And sadly, none of these changes were reversed Labor. by Labour in their nine years of government. Throughout all of this time, experts warned that this erosion of safety would result in the loss of Initial life. Call. It did in 2006 it, and then again yeah. last year. It's, um, Mr Speaker, from my kitchen point. window, I look out at the Paparoas where 29 men still lie. I am reminded every day that I am home of my commitment that those men's remains be brought back to their families, that the investigation of their deaths sees justice done, and that systems are reconstructed to protect all other underground miners from avoidable risk. I sat in on several days of the Royal Commission of Inquiry during the first phase. The Royal Commission heard about some of this and about some of the practical implications, as evidence was given about woeful gas management in the Pike River mine, a CEO who hadn't seen a plan of the mine, concerns from the CEO about inexperienced and unqualified staff, the astonishing lack of provision for escape from the mine, with Mines Rescue having warned the company that the emergency exit was effectively unusable in a fire and men encouraged instead to use the fresh air base in the mine with a capacity of just 20 men, concerns from the Pike River Company that New Zealand mine safety standards fall well short of their Australian counterparts, concerns from Pike River also about having just two mines inspectors for the entire country, now down to one, and concern that a recently appointed inspector with electrical safety responsibility in mines had no experience of electrical work in underground mines. It's not good enough, Mr Speaker. We need change, we need it now, and John Key's government must step up to the plate and deliver it, either by itself or in collaboration with other parties. Other parties. The Green Party stands ready to play our part in improving mine safety right now. There is no case to wait for the Royal Commission to report, as men go underground every day, right now, into environments that we know to be not as safe, safe as they could and should be. Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Rick Barker.